excited to have Emre here from Magic Leap. We're not going to talk a lot about Magic Leap, but um, he's worked on a lot of cool things. He's an Oc Oculus Grant winner. Um, he's done this really cool. I, I like the the Pokemon uh, music theme song, oh, with the, yeah, <laughs> the drums. I saw that a long time ago. I loved really? it. Yeah, I, think, I thought that was awesome. I didn't actually make the connection to the, that being you okay. until I saw it right now. Um, and so yeah, um, Hassan's got a few questions, and then we're gonna just open this up to the live chat. Again, we can't really talk too much about Magic Leap. Actually, we can't talk about Magic Leap at all because <laughs> I mean, as you all know, but we can talk about pretty much anything outside of that. So yeah. Enjoy, and uh, I'll be filtering uh, questions. Emery, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks. So first the question that we, we like to ask is, how'd you get started with VR and AR development? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I think my first experience with VR was um, junior year of college. Uh, I was visiting the Disney Imagineering campus in Glendale, California for this like competition we were part of. And then uh, when they were giving us a tour, they showed us this room they call the Dish. It's this like giant um, cave system. It's cool. called um, with like six projectiles all around, all around you. Like you can wear a head tracker, <laughs> like three D glasses. Nice. Um, so they showed us this super cool demo, and I'd never like heard of or like tried out VR before that. Mm -hmm. And I was just like blown away by the visual fidelity of this thing and like how much you could walk around yeah. and all this stuff. Um, so I thought that was unlike anything I'd seen and that's when I kind of decided to like um, learn more about it um, and then yeah that summer I got to work with that team uh, that was building that uh, cool. room and similar like VR tools so that was my first experience. So what are some cool projects that you've worked on? So... VR, AR is mostly our focus but maybe <laughs> some of the robotics okay, ones yeah. too. Well that was related to VR I think. Yeah. Um, so my senior year I worked on the senior project with three mechanical engineers where we built this um, telepresence robot that you, a user could control while wearing an Oculus uh, DK2. Mm -hmm. um, so we would just send the head <laughs> head track information like wirelessly yeah. to the robot and it could replicate your head movements like yeah, in the, all six degrees of the freedom. The demo is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun like having people try that, I think, mm -hmm. and like seeing their reactions because they could also drive the robot around like wirelessly. Um, so we had this like big show floor when we were showing this and this robot was just like driving around and like looking at people and moving sure. its head and stuff. And yeah, we were streaming, streaming two cameras back to the yeah. viewer. So it reminds me of those, uh, the telepresence robots that they have in like malls. I saw yeah, one at the Stanford shopping center. Yeah. It's just Bob. Oh, the, the Yours was way cooler though. I actually heard on the news that, um, there was this clickbait article about one of them. Uh, committing suicide by driving off of the edge of a parking lot. Like oh, it went to the oh top, yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah. And then it went over. So <laughs> I, I mean, that. hopefully the one that you created didn't didn't end up that no, way. No one drove it. No. <laughs> uh, what's your advice to people who are just starting out creating AR or VR games, prototypes, mm -hmm. and experiences? Um, I think one thing I struggle a lot with when I was first starting out was um, keeping my scope down uh, in the projects I worked on because hmm. like it's really easy to get overly ambitious I think and plan out this like huge project and then um, like over time you realize how much work it takes and then your motivation kind of di dies down whereas I think the finishing something and actually shipping it is like really valuable and it's something I've struggled with a lot um, like I suck at finishing things <laughs> I think um so well they say that the last 10 percent yeah. of a project is always I, yeah I, I believe that i think yeah. yeah and that's what we find too i mean the nice thing about streaming is that every saturday we get to just build the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, I know. first 25 yeah. percent yeah. and then we kind of just ditch the rest and put yeah. it on github but like even the stuff you guys do is super valuable just being yeah. able to prototype different game ideas and stuff right because like if you change your mind or if you want to go in a different direction with your project like um it's good to have the basic like game engine skills, I think. Yeah. To be able to um, think think about that. And um, prototyping is so important yeah. for learning too. I mean, from doing this, uh, Ghoster, Fuseman, and I have learned so much about you know what's possible with Unity, Unreal, and even virtual reality technologies and where it is today. So I totally agree with keeping the how did you put the it? Scope. it the scope <laughs> yeah keeping the scope down prototyping and testing first then getting to bigger experiences mm -hmm. if you could build anything for ar or vr uh, what would you build such a hard question make the scope big <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. I was yeah, I was talking thinking about this. Um, so I actually went to a room escape with a few of my friends uh, from work like last week. Mm. Um, I don't know what room escape. Oh, uh, like the one escape of those, the rooms. Yeah, escape rooms. Oh, okay. Um, and I've been kind of thinking about this for a while, but I do think I'd like to see a see how that would evolve into like for vr and ar possibly yeah so quick uh, summary for people who might not know so, the yeah. concept escape the room or room escape uh, you get a bunch of friends together <laughs> you're you pay to be locked in a room and have to find your way out of it's it fun. <laughs> sounds weird but it's actually really fun um yeah so i've been thinking like how that could evolve into like vr as a like room escape platform maybe or mm -hmm. where people could build their own experiences um it's like you're not limited by anything physical at that point, right? Yeah. So you could throw people in all sorts of crazy like situations. And... You could also have people that are remote. And right. it's cool yeah, because yeah. it's definitely a bonding experience yeah, exactly. to go through the stress of trying to get out of this room by solving puzzles. So I think that's a cool concept. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. Nice. It doesn't exist yet. All right, well, let's turn it over to all of you. Talking, I guess, about scope. And mm -hmm. I mean, I think we've talked a bit about the developer side, but like how does... How does it tie in with like artists, animation? Like, do you keep that when you're thinking about scope? And mm -hmm. I guess oh, overall, I guess number of people on your team and how that affects scope management. Uh, yeah, I think this is something I'm, yeah, uh, not certain about yet either. Because like all, well, the latest project I've been working on is like more of like a one man thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of call it a one man show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a drum yeah. <laughs> experience. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the most important thing is just like knowing the skill set of everyone on the team and yeah. um, seeing what the most important pieces would be for that person to build. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have like an animator on the team, obviously that's like pretty valuable. And then what are the, you could like prioritize between all the assets you have to create and like mm -hmm. what the most like core assets you need are. Sure. And then probably start out with those because, um, like, you might not need to animate everyone in the crowd, but like your main character, like, that might be a useful animation to have in your prototype or something, right? Yeah. Regarding AR and Disney, what do you think the f about the future of lightsabers? Technically, they're not possible yet, but do you, do you think using a stick and an overlay with a glow would work with AR? Nice. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Um, I think Disney's working on something like this. Um, really? Like a mixed reality thing. Um, oh, I think maybe. they announced something like that on, yeah. in the news where mm. they'll have people holding sticks <laughs> and like, they'll show a lightsaber on top of it. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they have all sorts of clever ways of doing stuff. Like, they don't just rely on AR and VR, I think. Like, they yeah. also use a lot of practical effects and stuff. But, yeah. well, at the park, I'm thinking more like um, Disney parks, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. Like, the Disney Park, they also have... Isn't one of the rides also VR now? Yeah, I mean, they have a few, like, Star Tours, I'd consider a yeah. VR ride, because you're in a simulator, and yep. that's, like, a motion base, and you have 3D glasses, so... Yep. Yeah, I'd definitely consider that. <laughs> that's um, a good call. Yeah, and that, that and also, do you, do you think the, the Buzz Lightyear and the Toy Story one, um, or, or would you put those? I, I mean... Or I, I, yeah, I've kind of put them more along the lines of a video game. Yeah, but. yeah. They're a lot more gamey, I think. They're still super fun. <laughs> yeah. That's like one of those rides where like, I'll go there, it's like five times yeah. during the course of the day. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta yeah. keep beating your high score. It's a really fun one. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot. And you can also play online, too, and compete that oh, way. I didn't know I, that. Yeah, that's pretty cool, that's right? pretty, Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, but yeah, Disney's working on a lot of cool things, um, which is, I think, really exciting to see where that yeah, goes. Yeah, totally. I think it was with, like, Acer or something that they announced. And, uh, I'm not yeah. totally sure. I mean, they've, yeah, they announced so many things. Like, they've announced a partnership with Oculus. They've mm -hmm. announced uh, the AR kit thing with Star Wars, Acer. Like, they're wonder, dabbling all over the place. <laughs> I'm not sure where the Oculus partnership is, though, because I think it was with Story Studio, and they're not oh. around anymore. So I don't know what to expect there, but that's a good point. There's lots of exciting stuff that they're up to. I'm just not sure about the progress of that one. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and then they also released Trials on Tatooine. So, oh, yeah. lots That's of... Cool. They're, they're, they're excited, and I think that makes sense. Yeah. We'll see where that goes. I wonder if they're dabbling in AI also. <laughs> Bring those characters to <laughs> Probably. <life. laughs> Talking a little bit about UI in VR and AR and how that's mm -hmm. different in each, in each case. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's specifically different with, like, say phone-based AR 
and we can dive a lot more into the definitions of AR. But <laughs> I, don't, I, I always try to avoid that. Um, but yeah, I mean, have you noticed anything specific, like us working in VR and anything that translates to um, any sorts of AR or like that, phone, things that phone don't specifically? A anything. Well, whatever you feel comfortable answering. Um, I mean, I feel like AR still isn't that far along sure. yet to like see what um, works well in there yet. Well, I haven't really done much with like the HoloLens or anything, but um, specifically for phone-based AR, uh, any like VR paradigms that would map over, or that don't like that like. Uh, I mean, I feel like a lot of the spatial uh spatial things wouldn't probably map over that one like you have a menu on your hand in vr mm -hmm. like, i don't i don't think there's any way of um mm -hmm. efficiently um doing that in ar like i'd much rather have something on my phone that i could click rather than like see a menu in space and like, try to like <laughs> yeah. touch touch that yeah i think uh, i mean it looks cool but like if you want users to use that um I don't know, it just seems like a better idea to go with the display itself. Yeah. And it's something that people have already learned how to do, and they're so used to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, that's like one of the things that excites me about ARKit. It kind of blends like yeah. this this virtual world that we're like, as VR devs we're used to building for, mm -hmm. but then it gives us the paradigm and the UI of what consumers are used to. So yeah. it's kind of this like nice balance that mm -hmm. like happens. Um, and that's what makes me excited for it. But like as you mentioned before, there are also things that are like, why do I want to move my phone around to actually measure this world when I could just tap a few buttons or swipe around on my phone? Yeah. So that makes it tricky, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea where that's going to go. Yeah, so I've done some AR research too. And um, I think an interesting thing that relates to what you're both talking about around like people imagine that with AR you're gonna have all sorts of crazy yeah. interfaces that are more efficient, but we are tied to smartphones or other things. Yeah. Um, it makes me think of the example. You guys should look it up. It's called the Twiddler. Have you guys heard of the Twiddler? I think I might have heard. Of so the, the it's a commonly told like design story because it was a a one-handed keyboard. So you would oh. like toggle vowels and different things and with one hand you could do all the typing that you need on your computer or on your phone it was just this attachment and they found through studies that if you go through the initial learning curve you can type way faster on this thing mm -hmm. than any other keyboard but people were already used to smartphones and normal <laughs> keyboards and they wouldn't get past that learning curve. Like they would just give up before they got there. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's important to remember that when designing these things, it's not just the most efficient thing that works, mm -hmm. it's the paradigms that people are used to and are comfortable with. Um, and I think that's really important for AR when we're thinking about all these like crazy diagrams yeah. and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so last question here from Roland is, do you think there's a danger to having AR glasses on? Um, uh, kind of like how people walk around with smartphones, like, and like, there, there's like a great video where like, someone's like texting and then they fall into a water fountain. <laughs> <type of thing>. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, and I think there's even a great video um, by Freddie Wong where he's like, walking around with Google Glass, yeah. and, he, and then he like, walks through this intersection, <laughs> and like, oh, haphazardly, and almost gets run <laughs> over. Um, so do you see? Do you foresee anything like with that, either on the smartphone side or even on the headset side? Uh, yeah, I mean, smartphone side definitely. Like, <laughs> you know, with Pokemon Go, like they had that like, yeah. little picture of like person like walking into like walking off the pier or something. Did you mm. see that? Yeah, no, it was, yeah, like, a I little did image see that. On the, oh, <laughs> um, no, it's like just the drawing. It's not like oh, an actual okay. person like, walking into. A oh, I thought that actually did happen. But I feel like yeah. things like that yeah, yeah. did happen where yeah. people either like got jumped or yeah. people ambushed yeah. them or I also heard of a case where people were using Pokemon Go at like a Auschwitz memorial yeah and it just really offended some other people there so there's real life examples of it yeah. too so yeah I mean there are definitely dangers of both yeah I think phone based I guess do you I'm think sure that's a concern um yeah I mean I, I'd say that's a concern but uh there's still some time till we till we're like People get used to it and yeah. realize um, how to use it. I mean, I'm sure people had concerns about like, using phones all the time and stuff too, but we're comfortable with that now. And we're mindful of how we use it. Like, I don't walk everywhere as I'm typing on my phone, like on the street, anything. So, sure. 
I guess you just be mindful of it and that should be okay. All right. well, thanks so much everyone for tuning in and thanks Amir for coming in. No, thanks, good to be here. All right, and so yeah, if you haven't, uh, go ahead and like the video, that helps us out a ton, or you can follow us on social media because you'll, you'll see teasers and see things about who's coming on. So uh, definitely take a look out for that. And um, I think that pretty much does it. So it's been Fuse, man. I'm Hassan, and we got Emery here. And we're signing.